What is going on here? You're changing the... Oh. It's auto-focusing, so... Okay. Hey, we're back in the dirt head shed. Going to work on my little yellow YJ, and it's time to show you how to weld a cast steel center section to a steel tube on a Dana 44. This is one of those problems that a lot of people ask about, how to weld one thing to another, and I'm going to show you how it's done. <laughs> Let me catch you up to speed on the axle in my YJ. This is kind of a cool little Jeep. I was trying to build this thing so that it was lightweight, strong enough. I didn't need another rig on 40s and tons. So this was sort of my attempt at building something a little bit lighter weight. This is a Dana 44 out of a 1979 Ford F-250 actually. And then, so this would have been in a leaf sprung truck and then it would have had eight lug hubs. So the hubs and outers are all off of a Ford Bronco. So that way it's got the five on five and a half bolt pattern. Um, I wanted something that had regular locking hubs on the end. I wanted a high pinion um, differential. I wanted something that was strong enough that I could really like drive this rig pretty hard. And this was what I came up with. The only problem was those axles are really wide. So I wanted to narrow it a little bit. So on this thing, I actually narrowed the driver's side down, I think, three inches, three and a half inches. I got it to where I'm running a Jeep TJ inner axle shaft on the driver's side, and then the Ford F-250 or Ford Bronco inner axle shaft on the passenger side. This thing was a leaf sprung axle, and then I cut all those brackets off and I three linked it using this Barnes three link kit. I did it so that it was quick and easy because I had to build this thing really fast on dirt every day. But part of the problem that I'm having now is that right after I put the thing together, the inner axle seal started puking like crazy. It was covering the whole inside of the driver's wheel with gear oil. Um, and then actually now, after I got back from Ultimate Adventure, I've got a huge oil leak coming from where the tube is pressed into the center chunk. So right now it's time to pull the axle shafts out, Pull those seals out, and I'm going to show you how to weld up that tube to the center chunk. this thing together I've been questioning like if the axle seal or the inner uh, seal is riding where it's supposed to this little bump up is where the ax the what do you want to call it inner axle seal that's where it's supposed to ride and I'm curious if since it's riding looks like it's riding way out here if that is a problem so this side wasn't really the problem that I was having all the leaking with so we'll find out on the driver's side This one is the side that's been leaking since day one. Dang it! I was hoping to find something crazy in here, and you can see the axle, the seal's riding right where it's supposed to, right on that flat surface. Um, I'll give you a little lowdown on what we got here. These are chromoly shafts from Ten Factory. They're just a chromoly replacement shaft, and then I'm running these Yukon Super Joints in there. So these joints are like a 4340 chromoly, which makes them really strong. They don't have a cross in them for grease. So um, you'll notice like they actually have a grease fitting on each end cap. And then inside they don't have a needle bearing. So for being such a small little axle shaft, this thing is actually really strong. No twisted splines. Sometimes you'll pull your axle out and you'll notice like the whole end of it looks like it's twisted um, that usually is like that means that you're about to break an axle shaft so this one the splines are still straight still straight there this thing's all good I'll grease it up and put it back in later oh come on jeez I guess I torqued those to spec so I'm pulling the front diff out usually when you get into one of these you'll notice that there's different markings for the bearing caps 
This one has an L on each side, and this one's an L on its side, and that one's upside down. Sometimes there'll just be like a center punch mark where you'll have like one dot on one side and two dots on the other. That basically just means that's where they want these bearing caps to live. So whenever you put them back together, make sure your either letters or your little dots or numbers, whatever the indicator is, is all lined back up. Differential's out. So what happens is you get an old axle housing, everything looks good, but it's old and it's been around for a long time. It's been beat up and I did all this other cool work to it, but I didn't ever know that this was going to be a problem. The tube where it goes into the center chunk or the, the whatever you want to call it, I'll call it the center chunk. The tube where it goes into the center chunk, it all kind of loosens up. It's press fit in there from the factory and then it's rosette welded. And over the years of the thing flexing and moving around, it'll get oil between the tube and that center chunk and it'll start, start leaking out. Once it leaks, then you kind of like have lost that press fit. So in order to make this thing last a little bit longer, I'm going to weld the tube to the, to the center chunk. I'll probably go back and re-weld these rosette welds and see if we can make this thing last another few years under this tree. So I'm sitting here with the torch, heating up this cast section, basically trying to burn the oil out that was leaking through there. It's never going to weld very well if it's still got a bunch of oil in there. So before I weld on it, i got to get all that contaminant out of there. And hopefully we get a nice clean weld without a bunch of pinholes and stuff. That way it doesn't leak again. This is one of those jobs that's kind of controversial just because we're welding one material to another. A lot of people would say that this is cast iron um, and they can't weld cast iron to steel. Um, but this center chunk is actually cast steel and we're going to be welding it to a steel tube. So although it is sort of a different material, it's not so different that you can't weld the two together. Um, I have seen plenty of people just MIG weld this successfully and I've also seen people try different techniques and what we're going to use is a TIG welder and a thing called Super Missile Rod today and that's basically like a hybrid stainless steel rod. Usually if you're going to weld dissimilar metals together, that stainless steel rod or a high nickel rod is what you want to use. This is Super Missile Rod. It's made by Harris and it is like a 312 stainless hybrid thing. It's made for welding dissimilar metals together. Even though these are both steel, we got one cast and one that's like a tube steel, so it is considered dissimilar. I learned about this stuff from this old guy. He's He was like an axle builder, drag racer guy from back in the day, and he used to do all these axle housings around San Diego, and he swore by this stuff. And it was like hard to get, it's pretty expensive, but it is so worth it. This stuff always works good. It's sort of like a magic welding rod. So if you do any TIG welding, pick up some super missile rod. It's good for just about everything. Let's see if I can make it work on this. I got the tubes welded up in there. I got the plug welds done. The super missile rod and the TIG welder worked great. Um, I love working on this old junk. It, I could have probably spent a bunch of money and bought a new axle for this thing, but I'm willing to throw a little bit of elbow grease at it, some welding rods, see if I can fix it. So I'm gonna see if this thing holds together. We will follow back up on it at a later date. If this is the kind of stuff that you like to see, let me know in the comments and we will keep doing stuff like this. It's pretty much what I do. Mm -hmm.